Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I'm coming to you live from the Urban Entomology Lab at Rutgers University. And I'm going to be talking to you about a do-it-yourself carbon dioxide trap that's being loosely called the sugar yeast trap. Um, and what this trap does is it generates carbon dioxide, which is what bed bugs are primarily attracted to when somebody, you know, is breathing and that's something that they're coming to to find you as a host. And what this trap does is it, it, it releases carbon dioxide and brings bed bugs to it that way. And it was developed here at Rutgers University by Dr. Chang Lu Wang and his team here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to make this trap. And so what we have here in the place to start is with a dog bowl that you can easily buy over the counter at many of your local stores. And what this is, as you can see, just your typical dog bowl. But if you turn it over upside down, it actually looks just like an interception device, which I have here. Now these are the types of interception devices that you put under the legs of your bed. And as bed bugs come to them, they fall in and get trapped and not be able to get out. Obviously these are a little bit small for a trap of the size we're going to talk about now. And so these are simple ones that you can, you know, create yourself that you can buy at your local store. And so what you're going to do is you're going to start with an inverted dog bowl. Now, the issue with this inverted dog bowl is that the outside is very slick. And so bed bugs would have a very difficult time walking up the outside. And so what you need to do is you actually need to texture that outside. Here's one that was in the lab that actually has a cloth on the outside of it. But a better option to texture the outside may be to use surgical tape or cloth tape. And what you can do is you can actually take the cloth tape and wrap the outside of the dog bowl so the bugs can get up and fall in. So that's the first step, is take your dog bowl, invert it, cloth tape or texture the outside. The next step is going to be to take talcum powder, just simple baby powder. You can take maybe a small cotton ball, dip it in the talcum powder, and lightly dust the inside of this trap. Now that's a very critical feature that you lightly dust it. It'll make it much easier on yourself to inspect it the next day if it's lightly dusted instead of dumping all the dust inside of it. Now what that's going to do is it's going to slick up the inside so the bugs have a very difficult time getting out. So that way anything that comes to this trap and falls in, you can easily find the next day. And so those are the first steps to this trap, is that you've got your two interception devices, which are glorified dog bowls, here. And so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to make the actual carbon dioxide or the sugar yeast trap. And so let's set these aside and move over here to these containers. Now, what you want to start with is a four gallon container and you can use a bucket like this. This is obviously a cat litter bucket um, and this right here is just your typical Tupperware container. The most important point that it is it's about a four gallon container. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we'll use this cat litter container as an example. And we're going to go ahead and inside this container, we're going to dump 150 grams of active dry yeast and 750 grams of sugar. Now you can go to your local cooking store and buy small little inexpensive scales if you don't know, you know, don't have a scale at home to measure that out. You're going to go ahead and you're going to dump these into the container. What you're going to do next is take three liters of warm water, about 40 degrees Celsius or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and go ahead and dump that in the container. Then take any type of stirring apparatus of your choice and go ahead and stir that up for about five minutes. What that's going to do is it's going to create enough carbon dioxide that's going to be about similar to about one and a half people sleeping inside that room over the course of the night. And so people always ask me this, you know, is this safe to do at home? You know, I always avoid the word safe, but if you do it consistent in the way that I just showed you, you know, there should be very little to no risk to you sleeping in the room. But the best option is that if you can set this and then leave that room vacant, that would optimize the effect of this trap. But if you need to sleep in the room, you shouldn't encounter any issues with the carbon dioxide being released because, this, again, it mimics about one and a half humans. So we have our sugar, 750 grams, our yeast, 150 grams, our three liters of warm water. It's in here. It's been stirred up for five minutes. What we're going to do now is go ahead and put the lid back on with whatever container we're using. The reason is to keep children's hands and pets out of there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to put it on top of our interception devices. Move these aside real quick. And what we have here are three, four actually, little wood blocks. Now what these are is these are just what I'll call risers or lifters. And what they're going to do is we're going to put them on each square of this dog bowl. 
Now when we put this on top, what it does is it lifts the container just above the top of those dog bowls. Reason why this is important is that first it gives it a little bit of stability. The one thing I will caution is that obviously you have three liters of yeast, sugar, and water in here, and if it gets knocked over, obviously you have a mess in your hands. So it makes it stable, but more importantly, it gets the container up above the dog bowl. So that way as the bugs come to it, they don't start walking up your container, they actually fall into the interception devices. And so the risers go there, you put your container on top, and away you go. Um, this is going to release that carbon dioxide over the course of the night. It should last about eight hours. And research at Rutgers has shown it's a very, very effective trap for monitoring for bed bugs. In some of my other videos, I talk about dry ice traps. Those are also very effective. This has actually been shown to be similar in effectiveness to dry ice traps. And so that's basically the summation of the story. You know, you come back in the morning, um, you take this, this you can dump right down the toilet. It's just sugar, yeast, and water. Rinse it out. And then you're going to take your interception devices you have here, take your simple household flashlight, take a quick look to see if you have bed bugs. And the best way to do this is, if you can, do it a couple nights in a row. Sometimes when you set these, not all the bed bugs in an environment are going to come to it. It may take a couple nights for some of those bugs to come to this trap. So the best way to do this is over the course of a couple nights, um, but a very simple, very cheap, and a very effective way to monitor for bed bugs. So if you have any questions about the sugar yeast carbon dioxide trap or any other topics relating to bed bugs, you know the email address, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. And I hope to see everybody soon enough.